Hello, guys. Welcome to our first episode of Liverpool Perspective in the 21-22 season. Let's this go. is episode, Let's I think, go. 20. This is actually episode 21. For, okay. So 21-22 season, episode 21. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week, I'm with my co-host, Dylan. I'm back. It's great to see everybody again. It's nice to talk about Liverpool again, and I hope for a fruitful 2021-2022 season, yeah. even though it's going to be going to be competitive, but I feel like last year we were so held down by injury. I feel like finally our players are getting back to health, and maybe we'll go somewhere. Yeah, it's going to be an than, exciting season. Better than just nearly like nail-biting yeah. qualifying for the well, Champions League. It's going to be a very exciting season with fans finally being back. Uh, clearly, it was dead. Mm-hmm. It was dead last year with no fans. Occasionally, we had some fans, like how many, like less a than thousand, 10, 000, like, like four thousand fans or something like that, which is basically nothing in the sixty thousand mm-hmm. stadium. So it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting season. Obviously, there are a lot of teams have improved on their squads massively. But yeah, what have you what what have you been up to the summer overall? Um. Not much. Some things beach, all that. Yeah. But um, yeah. I have been watching a lot of sports besides, I mean, obviously there's the Euros and uh, Copa America, but besides that, baseball, the NBA finals, NHL finals happened. But yeah. more importantly, since we are a soccer podcast, I do want to talk about some of the other events that happened earlier in the summer. So we'll cover that. And we're going to also cover, I guess, our transfers, other yeah. big transfers, and then I guess give a little preview of we're gonna, our, our expectations for Liverpool, I guess. Yeah, yeah. The other the other podcast did, did an excellent job on talking about the other sports. So we'll mm-hmm. we'll talk about we'll that we'll talk about the soccer. Uh, the Euros is I know the soccer universe covered with Yasha's friend and Archie did a great job covering the Euros, but we'll give our kind of perspective on the Euros in the Liverpool way, but. I mean, Liverpool players haven't really played much in the Euros. Henderson scored his first goal in England shirt, which was the, probably the best moment. That was and to see. Genie didn't do much. I mean, yeah, Van G- Dyke wasn't playing. Yeah, Van Dyke. Yeah, so Thiago was on the bench. With I don't under- I didn't understand that, but and he didn't even mm-hmm. did he even take a penalty in the Spain game? I'm not. Did he, they I- let Morata take a penalty ahead of him, like Jota play. Jota played, yeah. Jota got. Yeah. I remember, he missed a few chance, a lot of chances, like against uh, who they play? France? No, Portugal. Mm-hmm. No, Portugal. He played for Portugal. I'm stupid. Yeah. Who did? He, who did Portugal? Oh, they played Italy. He lost Italy. Jota missed a few chances, so people were criticizing him. But he still he, against Germany. He got a goal, a goal and assist. So. Well, you criticize him against Italy, and then and Italy ends up winning the cup. Surprise, yeah, so. I mean. It's like it's. I guess Jota was our best perform, was the best performer in our team in our in. Liverpool. And that's not saying much. <laughs> so we were kind of dead for the Euros, but it was uh, it was still fun to watch. It was good to see like all, I guess the old like the teams that everybody. I don't know. It's fun to see England, all the supporters, all the Italian supporters, and just even just watch uh, the run made by uh. Switzerland, that was super. Oh, yeah, Shaq had fun. a good tournament. So, yeah, Shakiri had a good tournament. Hopefully, that means, it, that means his price is going to go up and we could get rid of him. <laughs> probably is going to happen. Um, but, but yeah. yeah, it wasn't really just. I mean, it ended up just being an England Italy final, and England, of course, choked. Like, yeah, they did like choke. Usual. But um, props yeah. to Italy, and uh, it was just an fun tournament to watch in the group stages through the... Uh, yeah, it was a, I think this tournament is actually pretty good in comparison mm-hmm. to the lot previous Euro. So, we had a lot of goals, we had a lot of penalties, we had a lot of extra times. A lot of good stories. Obviously, the Ericsson thing that happened was terrible as well. That was not a mm-hmm. good story, but it was a good story just at the end to see how Denmark did in the tournament. That I was... Uh, it's like you'd expect if what if they had Ericsson? Like, yeah, but I totally like that happened so early in the tournament. What if Denmark had Ericsson through the tournament? Do you think, yeah, but you say that, but I think the Ericsson, no, thing but the gave thing, him I, that's what I was thinking. With if they had Ericsson, there's a chance that they could have gone even farther, but there's also a chance that they didn't have the momentum. And I think they were really playing for Christian, yeah, they were playing for Christian, and yeah, that's true. They, I mean, 
And I didn't give up. So it was yeah, De- props to Denmark too. It was Denmark, yeah. Switzerland, really were the big underdogs. Yeah, it was a really nice. It was a nice tournament to see. Mm-hmm. To be honest, it was. You had the, nice, you had your yeah. usual. It was nice to see some fan, fans in the stadiums mm-hmm. too. Hopefully, it gives us a preview of how the prem will go. With we'll talk about a preview back. of that uh, with the our games, our preseason games. Though I thought the uh, "Don't Ever Walk Alone" was just like. Yeah, that was. That's, an, that's that was great incredible. to see. That's. Mm-hmm. That was incredible as well, but and. On the other hand, the Copa America was not with fans. Yeah, and that's I mean that was almost a disaster. How did that was almost that was almost canceled? Like I thought that was going to be canceled at one point. I thought it'd be canceled too. How many players are dropping out? Yeah, but um, I was, I was just happy to see. I mean, I'm Argentine part. My family in Argentina, so obviously I was happy to see them win, and obviously happy to see Messi get his. Yeah, I was really finally get his title. But I feel like if Messi didn't win that tournament, he would have never played another game in Argentine shirt. Yeah, I was really happy that he won. Especially, yeah, just, this felt like it was. Mm-hmm. This felt it was, like it was years. It was this is years coming. in the making, kind of. Yeah, because I. You saw him like, not do, go through against Germany. You saw him not go through against Colombia twice. Like no, Chile, Chile, or Chile, Chile. Oh yeah, Chile, yeah, Chile twice. And like, you'd expect Messi, the best player in the world, to finally carry the torch, but. I mean, he he just couldn't. And then finally, in the pop, this we could say this was like a whatever it's a Mickey Mouse title, like it's the COVID title. But you could also say this is the hardest to get because of how many people were dropping out, how many uh like the precautions of the tournament. You're in Brazil in the middle of COVID, like, yeah. and you have to stay healthy. So Messi was able to really, and he played like some of the best soccer he's ever played of his career. And yeah, he was, he was amazing in the tournament. Mm-hmm. I watched like I didn't watch like the first four games, but because it was just like the group stage was kind of mm-hmm. stupid. It just, and like, you could four, tell four out of the five teams made it, so I'm just hard that team that would make it. All the stress that's been on Messi's shoulders throughout right. throughout his career, all the uh, like you could tell Messi's always kind of been in a zone. He knows like he's the best player in the world, but he know he still wants to silence the doubters, and I think this is what really. Took that weight off his shoulders. And yeah, for down. sure, mm-hmm. for sure. But yeah, I w- I didn't watch the, really the first four games because it was just kind of for me it was kind of like friendlies because it was clear mm-hmm. the RG team would make would make it through. But I watched like the quarterfinals against Ecuador, then the Colombia, mm-hmm. and then Brazil. And, and then yeah, just, to, just to, to beat Brazil at the moment, especially in the Colombia g- game. Yeah, like uh, and Colombia just to be- and Ecuador, he was great. So. It's never easy to beat Brazil in Rio, like. Yeah, even I mean, there were still fan, fans in that final, like mm-hmm. a, a little bit more Brazil, but it was yeah, it was still a nice thing to see, and especially five years ago, I was I was at that game where Messi missed the penalty against Chile at MetLife, mm-hmm. so. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, I, I forgot that that tournament they did in the United States to make money. <laughs> yeah. I, I, honestly, they should do that more. Often. They should do that. They actually should. That's well. That's up. like remember. I've still been hearing uh, pieces here and there of. Uh, remember when uh, La Liga proposed to host? Yeah. Not, okay. That, that that's I like know that's support, like. I no, that I don't that. want. But like that's like, kind of a long. But I guess other tournaments maybe to host in the United States because over the summer it's like if it's gonna make money anyway it's in the United States. But keep the Euros in Europe. I guess keep. Yeah. No. That. Copa no, America and Co- Co- Copa America like should be. In- they should combine the Confed Cup and Com- Com- the Commonwealth like tournaments, and they should like form a, one tournament together because I feel like the Copa America and the Gold Cup those tournaments are way too small. Like, and mm. I feel like if it's like well, a- I feel like the Copa America is still not even too small because we still have very good teams. We still have Argentina, Brazil, Chile. I, no, I agree with yeah. that, but I feel like in terms, I mean, small in terms of the compared to the Euros where you have like sixteen mm-hmm. teams. I mean, the Euros is the Europe is just bigger overall. Because, yeah, I think there's also at least on most of the European teams, even the smaller ones, there's still at least one star player. Like even on the smaller teams. Yeah, I agree. And I we just saw feel that like entirely combine, this tournament. If you combine North America and, and South America, I feel like it would be a lot more entertaining. Well, that you would not have to see four teams qualify in a group of five teams. That would also screw over our Golden Boys in the United States who won the gold. Yeah, Cup. but it would be nice to see <laughs> be more competitive against these. Yeah, teams. true. It would also the, force the U.S. Be a, to be it better. It would be a good test for it instead of playing Mexico all the time. Yeah. And we, we a, already are beating Mexico all the time. Finally, so. And we're beating Mexico with our C team. Yeah. We so, we, players. <laughs> so we could we could beat them. Now we could beat I think, Argentina. I we think could beat it, everyone. We could get, I mean, 
if we, if the U.S. fielded its best team and had the coach and had the and it was they really for once the U.S.'s coaching didn't look like shit. Yeah, they, I, it yeah, didn't look true. like shit. So um, if we had that the coaching and all the players in our full lineup, I th- we could the U.S. in the next World Cup could honestly make it. Pa- finally pass like the ra- into the quarterfinals. At- Hopefully. Yeah, if they, but know. it's just, the players could still be good. We could still have a full set of players of McKinney and Pulisic and everybody yeah, that's no, in yeah. there right now. But if the coaching isn't there like it's been, we still lose to Trinidad, so. Yeah, well, we do have some as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, but it's, that, the U.S. is definitely one of the big pluses in the summer to see how they're how they were able I really to win am excited the World to see Cup and and beat Mexico in the CONCACAF Nations League. It's just still when when you look at the Gold Cup, it would and you look at Copa America, I would still like it to be like how the Copa America was in 2016. And it when would be quali- good for both. When do qualifiers begin? What? When do world uh, the qualifiers World begin in September? So that is going to be, yeah. That's going to be yeah. actually competitive. Mm-hmm. Like, the teams are actually pretty good in, in conflict mm-hmm. after. I think they improved. Like, you have Jamaica. They have um, Mikel Antonio back. They have... You think Canada has Davis? Canada has Davis. So it should be... And Panama and Honduras are pretty sol- solid mm-hmm. teams as Costa well. Costa Rica. Costa Rica, yeah. So it, I, I think it'll be an interesting thing. But, yeah. But let's say, let's segue... To Liverpool, uh, obviously. Actually, bef- before we were talking about actually, no, before we get to Liverpool, let's talk about like transfers overall. Other teams yeah. have been doing, and the the main transfer just that just happened just today happened is Messi. Today was, that's uh, very kind of it's an upsetting transfer, obviously, because I I'm more of a Messi fan than a Barcelona fan, just because I'm Argentine part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's just it's, it's just shame I mean, that you he thought Messi would Barcelona, play his but... whole, whole career, and like there was the whole drama of whether he was actually just going to leave Barcelona, and he didn't, and he stayed, and now he actually wanted to stay, and he was willing to take a massive pay cut, even though he was still getting paid a lot of money. Yeah, it was, but, it, was um, kind of, it was heartbreaking. It just but it, it's La Liga was the one who didn't allow it, like yeah. Barca, and it's that's not even La Liga's fault. It's the ma- mismanagement that upset Ma- Messi back then. That Barcelona was spending so much money, even though Messi was able to clear it up, it came back to bite them. Yeah, the Bartomeu, yeah, Bar- Momo, I think yeah. that's that's his name. <laughs> his re- his regime, his like was ter- his ownership was terrible. Mm-hmm. Like he, like with all the signings they got, Dembele, Griezmann for all these expense, Coutinho for all these expensive prices, and now but and now the funny things they want to get rid of Coutinho, and we don't want them. <laughs> Which is um, very interesting, but I think that, especially like maybe Barcelona does need this in a sense because Real once they lost Ronaldo, you they had to kind of they still well, have their older players. They're also struggling as well. They, but they had to really they, they it gave the perspective that these big teams still have to develop and get young players. Yeah. Like so, Barcelona is finally going to have to go back, and we're going to see a very young Barcelona team. But I think I think this this kind of shows that. La Liga has definitely lost their their also, yeah. status of being the best, one of the best. The best. No, La Liga. If you ask somebody who the best league in the world in 2014, 2015 was, it was La Liga. Yeah. Now okay. that's gone. Yeah. It's definitely that's the Premier League gone. because the clubs had, are being managed. We could say all we want with the owners. The top well, eight when clubs. You have, in- when you have owners like Abramovich and uh, Abramovich and and the Man City owner, like when you have those owners, like they're. The, Mm-hmm. Say what you want about them, but they kind of elevated the Premier League to a much higher level. The and it kind of caused it started to cause more money being spent in the mm-hmm. in the league. Even like with Liverpool with Fenway Sports Group, they uh, really brought in like com- the American sports kind of mentality, and that's like you have to buy to win in a sense because like they did it with the Red Sox, they did it with um I forgot he owned another team. I think he was with. John Henry was with the Marlins for a bit, and right before, right during his regime was when they won the World Series. So um, it's a really cutthroat. The Premier League has gotten cutthroat, which is a good thing for all the owners and all uh, the like player management to sign the best players. But the thing is, it hasn't lost its. There's still a competitive edge where the top, even like the top seven, the top ten teams, 
the top half of the table could all be competitive. Yeah, but that's and, because that's also because they're spending money. Yes, and even the, but even the smaller teams, the ones that were brought up from uh, the championship, could upset Liverpool and Man City. Yeah, but again, like you see. Another another transfer that happened is Grealish moving to Man City. Which is yeah, that's a money move. That's a and, yeah, and but what what did Villa do? They got they got Leon Bailey for mm-hmm. a good for for exp, I guess expensive price for Villa standards, but they also got Danny Ings and they got the Bandia player ahead of ahead of Arsenal. So Danny I, Ings they, is like I don't so, know why. And they, so I think in my opinion those signings have improved their team. Mm-hmm greater to better and i think it's a better team than when they had Grealish because mm-hmm. i feel like villa were relying on Grealish too much and once he got injured they started to fall off mm-hmm. so i think that kind of i think that kind of shows how like these teams like you would say west ham villa like they're starting to make big signings as well that's kind of making them be very competitive and then you mm-hmm. see teams like tottenham and arsenal who haven't really done as much as much business as they want to. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of problems in each. Arsenal is also they're going to be falling man- even that's further. Management. That's also like Arsenal has more money than most teams in the entire world. But the thing is, they're just mismanaged. Yeah. Also, so like the and that's that's a whole other thing with Kroenke and like. I mean, Kroenke is controversial mm-hmm. everywhere. So with the Rams, like he spends money on this huge stadium, and they can't really they still have like i don't know if they're gonna contend fully because Mm -hmm. they did get a they did have a few big trades but that's the same thing with arsenal it's like he arsenal can make a splash and sometimes they do there's always links to arsenal once in a while we hear about a big name because it's like a place where they say oh maybe they'll change the culture you know what i mean and Mm -hmm. that's never what i that's what they thought with Obama Yang when they came in, even with Sanchez well back in the day. They thought they're going to change the culture and it, then Arsenal can't get a title. Yeah. And that, and also, has, and that's management problems from the coach all the way up to ownership. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, in, in regards to Messi, he's going to be wearing number 30, which is his first shirt he had in Barca. So it's kind of like a throwback in a way. Definitely. So mm-hmm. it's going to be pretty interesting. I mean, PSD surely should win the Champions League, though. Do you think anybody else at Barcelona is going to wear the number 10? That's a good question. I, I mean, I think so. It's I a mean, common I, number, but it's... Uh, and they had Ronaldinho wear it, so... So, Ronaldinho mm-hmm. wearing it. I, I, they had so many other players wearing that number 10, so I think... It's a common number, but it's... I don't know, but it's like he is their best player of all time, like, clearly. Yeah, but I think... Mm-hmm. I, don't, I think they'll still keep the number 10 for other players they better uh, they better i feel like if it was not if it was not barca or it was like a small a slightly smaller team yeah i think yes but mm. otherwise i don't think so i think barca mm. are, are but barca. Guess knows they could have any of these event uh, sign some random kid out of a random country <laughs> yeah but yeah i think it's just very interesting how like the mains the main clubs you know like barca Real madrid they're kind of following and now there's a rise of these different type of clubs like PSG, Man City, Chelsea. Us, Liverpool. Uh, us. Like, yeah, way, I mean, we haven't really made any transfers was, in that no, way. No, not even transfers. I'm not talking transfers, just... Um, yeah, Al- Klopp is definitely... Al- yeah. Klopp is definitely... Elevated. And, no, and um, sort of um, global appeal. Like, we've... There used to be the... Glo- like, for st- decades, it was always Barcelona and Real that had the global appeal. And I think with the rise of online media and just... Um, everybody want to see highlights and all that. Once, like, uh, if a team gets good, like Liverpool, they're getting a lot of clicks. Oh, for sure, yeah. I think it's social media is a blessing and a curse, but it's. I think social media has really helped elevate Liverpool, and I think we have really because Liverpool was really faltering for a bit for the early two thousands into the mid two thousand tens, and I think they were since we got John Henry was really smart with the Red Sox and he did make them a global brand, even though they, it's a baseball club. You still see Red Sox hats, you know, on other parts. Yeah. But I think it was, but I think it's, it's, it's no, it's the uh, making live clops made like he hired Klopp for that to make. Oh, for sure. I'm I'm not saying it was a good decision that, Mm -hmm. but I think a lot, I think a lot of, because in the beginning of FSG, like the beginning, obviously they came in a tough time. 
Mm-hmm. I like with Brendan Rodgers when he was there. I don't think he, they were Liverpool were a global brand like with under Rodgers. Well, the thing is, Liverpool until of, Klopp came. Can't say Liverpool isn't a global brand because it's kind of always. Yeah, it's, a, Liverpool have been a big club. I'm just saying, like mm-hmm. in the way you're saying it mm-hmm. is now, I think it's more because of how. Because I remember when I first started following Liverpool on Instagram when I first met Instagram probably like 2014 mm-hmm. or whatever. They probably had, I don't know, not, they probably just had around a million followers maybe 1.3 yeah. like now they have like what 15 or 20 no probably in the 20s millions yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think but i think a lot of it again i think it's social was, media i think that was the year before clock came so i think that mm-hmm. kind of but i think well clock was like it's, they really want to build a perfect team and i clock was all part of that and they want to build that perfect attacking yeah team. that's true i'm not saying and, yeah, they brought in. Weird. That's why they brought in Salah and Firmino, or no, for sure. Salah and Mane back in the day to make those kind of like highlight, fast-paced yeah. plays. And even though our def- when our defenders are making highlight cross plays, you know what type of team you have. Like, I mean, Arsenal also. I mean, the the goal is not to have, a, I guess, a global brand. I mean, there's more to it. Obviously, Arsenal are a global brand as well. But where the hell are they? Mm-hmm. Like um, in, for example, in NYU, well, I think, in NYU, I see so many Arsenal fans, and they're they're all I, Arsenal all fans, but it's still like, being crap. I don't know. Arsenal fans is also like, it's it's more passed down. I think it's also the previous generation, yeah, from the Wenger dynasty, and that was kind of on the cusp of this. Uh, when do you think? Because soccer was more neat, like European soccer in the United States, or European football in the United States was always more niche and like watched. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And now, or even in other countries, now you see like, I'd say probably in the early 2010s is when it kind of exploded in the United States. You know what I mean? Now you see yeah. people. Oh, just, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And you could see, you could see the, the results of that with the uh, young players. Because are, I feel like there's right now. With, almost, there's probably just as many Premier League fans living in the United States as MLS fans, if not more. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, but, and I think that we can see that with the talents that are coming from the mm-hmm. from US from the yeah. US, and I think so. That's why I think Chelsea they were one of the things they bought Pulisic for was hoping to capitalize on that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I, that's, that's why. I, that's why my I was talking to my dad a bit about it. Um, he wanted before he was still in Dortmund when he was still in Dortmund to get so, Pulisic. Austin, yeah. yeah, yeah, because we would have that would have everybody in the US would have a Liverpool Pulisic jersey. So yeah. like. I definitely agree. Mm. Yeah. Well, I love, I mean, we thought, how do you think we were talking about the grill? We kind of talked, mentioned the grill a little bit earlier. How do you think he'll do? Um, if he Steady. stays healthy, and I mean, he'll have a probably mid to high, like low to mid 20 goals, probably. He could, mm. if, he has a, if Man City has a season that they're expected to. Yeah. And if they don't sign Kane, <laughs> yeah. They... If 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 Grealish is their main attacker, then I think he's gonna have he's a golden boot mm. uh, potential. Uh, but see, uh, the thing I uh, the thing where I'm kind of still but the thing is, if Man I mean, City... I'm not, the only thing I still doubt in City is that is how they're gonna how they're gonna use all their creative players because they mm-hmm. I mean I know Bernardo Silva they're saying he could, he could leave. He wants to leave, but forget it. Besides him, but look at how many creative players they have. They have Foden, they have mm-hmm. Foden, they have, they have Foden, De Bruyne, and then they ha- now they have Grealish. So kind of three similar players. So it's gonna be interesting. And maybe there's more, but I can't really recall if they have any more of those type, creative type players. So it's gonna. I think it's mm-hmm. gonna be interesting to see how they kind of work together. Man City is yeah. obviously the team to beat again this I year. I mean, clearly, I think clearly uh, Pep could pr- definitely make them be good, could make them work together, gel really well. But, and I think if, they, if, fa- if you get Kane, it's like the final piece of the puzzle for Man City hmm? to do well. Yeah, no, that's the thing. But if Grealish wants more of the spotlight, Kane is not like, the thing is they're either going to have to have this more creative style, kind of, it's almost like Pepe Barcelona if they don't have uh, Kane. Yeah, I'm just saying it'll be very interesting to see. It's going to be a lot, Kane's going to, they're going to be throwing balls up to him, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're going to try to do all those crosses, try to have Kane 
running too for quick. Yeah, but can not can does not have the stat. He could he could play like he could play like a Firmino role as well. Mm-hmm. And he could do that part of the he's good at that part of the game as well. And that's where I think Tottenham has kind of failed at. It's misusing him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But, but uh, do you think what's the chances he stays there? No, I, I think he could stay. You will, I guess we have to figure see what happens. It, I mean, the thing is, he knows, Tottenham do play Man City winning, this week. Why well, I think Kane looks like he's not winning stay, a title. So. I don't. I think he knows he's not going to win a title in Tottenham. No, I think so too. I think he wants. I think. Well, I don't think mm-hmm. we know he wants to leave. But it's about he knows he can win a title anywhere in the world. But I don't see why. But he's saying like. Could he go to Madrid? Because I feel like I always heard he was linked. Like he's always been linked to Madrid, but yeah, he I has. Mean, but I don't know who wants. To I don't know if he Madrid wants right to now. leave England. Yeah, I don't think it's I, an I easy. Think it's, I think he realizes it would be an easy title right now if he goes to Man City. But does he want to go to Man City? That's the thing. Well, mm-hmm. Listen, I think it's gonna be. I think even the King goes to Man City. I think it still could be a really competitive title race. I don't think. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be really, especially with Chelsea. Chelsea, how they improve. Chelsea is yes. Chelsea is scary. But I think I think Chelsea. I think Chelsea could be really. I think I'm not sure like who is the better team between Chelsea and Man City. Mm-hmm. It, like if they they have Luka, they're getting Lukaku, which is an, the exact player they needed. Like you, they, they, Lukaku they're, comes around back to the Premier League. Yeah, like Chelsea are the best in every single statistic. Back I think. in blue in the other way. I think Chelsea are like the best in every statistic under Tuchel, except for scoring goals. And now with Lukaku, I mean, I, Chelsea have a great record against Man City. They won beat Man City the past three times. They're the champions of Europe. So I think yeah, no Chelsea. I really United, think Chelsea I, could. The thing is, like, unless we have to play some of like we have to play like we were playing in 2019, some of the best football ever, because we're gonna have to keep not just Man City and Chelsea. United's gonna give us a <laughs> go okay. Yeah, that. I want to mention it. another thing. Another thing I want to mention before we talk about us is May United. They also got they got Sancho. They got and they they they're getting Varane as well. Two players that they really I think they've always also been. filling the pieces that they have been missing. I think the only thing they need right now is a center mid. And honestly, I think they do need a new manager, but mm-hmm. but. Listen, I, that's not gonna happen. So, so United still need a midfielder and a manager, but mm-hmm. the one is not gonna happen. So, I think that, now United should still be competitive in the title in like the title race, but I feel like they'll fall off. I, I think, think no, it's more about really it's early. more about if uh, competing with them for also top four. More about. Mm, I don't really I, honestly. I don't see Leicester compete. Leicester competing in the top four really? this year. I, I mean, mean, I unless you not unless one of the four teams really yeah. perform I under expectations, being like, which I do, I think it's going to be United at the moment. But do you think there's also a chance that we say like all these expectations that like these teams going to be good? There's always a chance that one team is going to. Yeah, I think that, I think there's going to be two teams who who maybe two teams can fall when, off. Which I don't know. I don't know what the set. I think United will be one of them, but I don't know the other team. Which remember when hopefully Chelsea, won't be us, uh, but Chelsea but, won in twenty sixteen or uh, yeah twenty sixteen, and then immediately afterwards they were in what like, or was that the year before they were in like dead last? Who who are you talking about? Chelsea, oh, Leicester. Remember, yeah, no, no, no. It was Chelsea. Remember they? It was um they won the league and then oh yeah i don't think that'll happen to this then they were like they ended up in 10th that year i think no i don't think that'll happen no but no no no, no, no. that's just an example that's an example yeah but i think they're a young team who really i think they're going on the on the up no 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 no. uh chelsea no i'm not saying that i'm just saying not about chelsea just as an example like that could happen yeah that could happen but i don't think i don't think it will happen i don't think any of the teams will underperform that badly i'm hoping there's a chance that's the only thing where is if we can underperform well. And that's all depends on if we stay fit. I think fitness is what kills us every year. Okay, yeah. So let's kind of, let's kind of get into Liverpool. I'll be honest, before the before like the preseason, I wasn't confident heading into the season. Mm-hmm. I feel like the other teams have been spending a lot of money and they've improved their squads massively while our squad is the same. 
which I think is a good thing that's stable, obviously. I feel like I, I still feel like we, I, I'm not sure we need like a genie replacement necessarily. I feel like we have a, I, I know there's a lot of questions that people are raising about, about Ox's fitness, Kieta's, Kieta's fitness, uh, and like, is, is Jones completely prepared? But I feel like if we don't trust Ox or we don't trust Kieta, we, then what's the point of keeping them? I feel like, so I feel like we need, I feel like if, if Klopp trusts them, I feel like we should go with them. I don't think we necessarily need another midfielder. Well, I do think we need is, is like another forward, like a Jota type signing to like kind of boost our, the depth of our front three, because I don't think Origi, I know Minamino played well yesterday, I think he could, he could also be another player in and around, but I feel like we do with Origi not good enough, security not good enough for us. I think we need that not another player in there. Um, it's interesting that you said that. Uh, what was it about? Oh my god, I completely blanked on it because I was distracted about our depth right now at the front. Yeah, but um, it's that our squads. Yeah, it was about our, that our squads the same that we didn't really improve much it is. Because we saw it a bit. Do you think we've been figured out slightly? Hmm? I don't know. Like we saw it. Um, we've, yeah, we've, but I feel like it, last year it's really hard to say if you've been figured out. I feel like just the, uh, the it, I feel like we just were kind of stuck said with adaptive with Van Dyke coming, being, coming injured, being injured, Gomez being injured. I feel like and I feel like there's a lot of nervous tension going on within the club to like figure out how to to handle it, especially with no fans and like the whole situation is going without fans. And it just felt like kind of like a like mm. a nothing situation. Like no one was able to give them motivation except mm. they have to give motivation to themselves. Yeah. And, that's- I, and I feel like we kind of I feel like with all like Liverpool is a fan club. Like we mm. Liverpool are built on supporters like more than any other club in the Premier League, I think. Mm-hmm. So that's I think true. with the fans coming back at like I watched the two. Like I think what gave me more comfort was the was the two games I watched the two games yeah, no, the no, first no, half no. I watched I didn't watch this I didn't really I had to do stuff for, stuff for this in the second during the second half so I didn't really watch it but like the first half against Atletico Bilbao was was absolutely was excellent like like mm-hmm. this it seemed like it looked like Liverpool from two years ago three years ago so that's the Liverpool we wanted to see we really wanted to see like Harvey Elliott. That's mm-hmm. that's another that, that that's was, a guy like that's another guy we, we should look out for this year because he he's absolutely superb. Like that would have been a, that would have been a stellar goal, and it literally was. Mm. Oh, the crossbar! Yeah. yeah, but like overall, his performance he was he was driving at defenders. Like that's a guy we could. Mm-hmm. I mean, you the question it. is what you the don't question want... is what. Oh, what were you gonna say? Oh, it's just like you just even like when. You have a young player putting effort. That could be. It matters so much more that effort than sometimes star players trying to just make something work. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's. So you could have Harvey Elliott come in as a star sub sometime, you know, or not a star sub, but a, as not a. That's what I was. That's what I was pull about. Pull out a star. Say. Pull out a star, but put in and put him in as a sub, and he'll maybe maybe make a chance. You know what I mean? Yeah, like in the seventieth minute, eighty, like something like that. I mean. Do you think like he needs another loan to have more game time, or do you think he, we could give him enough game time for him to develop? At um, this point? I'd say if we want to start and put him in as a, I think he should have a lot of time, a good amount of time as a sub. If we and if not, then loan him. But if we want to see him play, send him out as a sub, see if maybe he'll have a goal or two. And if he is productive as a sub, he makes runs, yeah, we uh, makes pass attempts, all that. I think then maybe. Start him for a game, not against not a, like an, a super important game against like Man City, but maybe a game against Norwich or whatever. And then, yeah, I mean, he's not really, he's 18 years old, so he still has a lot of time in his mm-hmm. career to kind of, but I definitely think so. I agree. Like, we have, we play our opening three games is against Norwich, Burnley, and Chelsea uh, ahead of the transfer window deadline. So, like, we, I think we give him, we give him, we see three games. If he comes off the bench, we can see what he could do. Mm-hmm. Because he could easily come off the bench against Norwich and Burnley, I think, for sure. So, like, I think let's see what happens with that and see how how he how he goes, how he. But yeah, in, in the other, in the friendly, who else would? 
I mean, Jota was playing really well. And Keta was another player. Keta, I mean, what do you think about him? Because he had the... He's had a really good preseason, so. Um, I mean, I feel like Kate is always a player we've always said is like really good, and it's never really shown. Yeah. All that, and um, if he breaks out, then I think we could really give other teams a run for the money. If all if the players that we've always hoped break out break out, then like if Thiago has a good year, mm-hmm. if Kata has a good year, if um, our back four Robertson and if. Uh, what's uh, Robertson Van Dyke? Who do you think is gonna be our? Well, I, I, well, I just want before we get there, I want to kind of get talk about our like options right now. But I was gonna mention about Kieto. Like, mm-hmm. I think this is his last chance. Like, mm-hmm. I think I think I heard that he has two, two years left on his deal. So, so I this is definitely his last like chance for him. I mean, last year, to be honest, for a lot of these players that like were coming in and out, like Ox and Kieta, it's kind of hard to say. Like, it was hard to say anything bad about them because we were really in a difficult situation with all the injuries. Mm-hmm. Henderson got injured as well, and like when you don't have a spine in your team, like it's very hard to. Re- mm-hmm. It's really hard to recover. recover from that. So it's Van hard Dyke to like and Henderson. Those were literally our two captains. Like. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, the fact that we still got third that year is still very impressive. And but going back to Keta, I, I really like if he could keep a good run of form going. Like he's a really good player, and I think that's another. That's a guy who could def- obviously we have a, a full preseason for the first time in like two years because last year was not preseason. And I think it's it's been really good for Keta and a lot of other players, including. Oxley Chamberlain, who also was really good this this preseason, like he against against As- Asunawa, I think that team name is. He was man of the match. He was he was he was giving so much effort. He was driving at the players like well, how Ox normally plays, like mm-hmm. at his best. I mean, how do you think he'll do this year? Um, you could. I'm hoping. I feel like if Klopp is. Fully there. It also depends on. It all comes down to like Henderson, Van Dijk. Like the players come back from injury. You know what I mean, too. Because we nearly need the thing. Players play better when their other player. That's the whole thing about Liverpool. They make each other better. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. And how, like, I just want to see how Henderson, like Ox and Henderson, Miss Henderson, how he comes back, how uh, uh, this season, since he was injured for so long last season, how Van Dyke. Van Dyke is going to be the big key in how he plays. And how do you think, like, I mean, Ox looked really good, but we're going to need to see everybody else also look good to really put up a fight. I mean, because Liverpool, there's some teams that have, like, that one player. Obviously, now PSG have, has three of those players, but yeah. they're making something out of nothing. And Liverpool, they still have all really good players, but they all need to kind of work together. That's what makes, that's the Liverpool way, Klopp attacking system. They kind of, it flows through the entire team. Yeah, but um, sure. there's not so, that one super creative player who just makes something out of nothing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. I definitely agree with that. I just think it's very exciting to see our option. I, I, I'm in. Like, I don't think we really necessarily. And then we also have like we need another midfielder. We also have Jones, who I think he had a really good season last year. And I think if he, I think he could. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's obviously. Good, I think he's obviously going to improve because he's mm-hmm. he he. He was 19 last year. Now, now he's 20. Going to be 21 soon. So, like, I, so I think he's definitely another one that will definitely improve. But the other, the unfortunate thing that happened was Robertson getting injured in the first friendly. So, mm-hmm. but how long did they say? But I, I watched them. I, I mean, how worried are you with him? How long did they say again? I think Klopp said weeks, like so, like two to four weeks. I think. In uh, I, heard, I thought I heard four to six originally. So, um, that is kind of worrisome. I mean, we're gonna have to have. Yeah, we have know, to. Have we're gonna have the makeshift defense. But the thing is, when Robertson does come back, we do have Van Dyke in the defense, and Van Dyke is a lot more important than Robertson. I think he any 
you can hit put any defender with Van Dyke and it will make the other defender better. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was watching, I, I watched uh, this friendly yesterday where, of course, the Simicast was playing. And I thought he was, he was excellent. Simicast, that's what I've heard. He looked that's, really that's good. That's, I mean, we, obviously last year he didn't really get a chance because Robertson is fit the whole year. Mm-hmm. And when you have Van Dyke injured, when you have Gomez injured and Matip injured, you have to go with your experience. You can't let, a new a guy a new guy who hasn't really proven much for Liverpool come in and take your and take a player who has been playing year in year out like like mm-hmm. so I think last year really he didn't have much of a chance to like get into the team but now with him having a full preseason I think Simakas mm-hmm. like if he, he can keep good. up that performance but again that's another 70 70th minute player who could really help change the tide of a game oh yeah I'm just saying by like. For him to or replace Robertson right or, now, yeah, even that, like his cross to Firmino against Ashwin, Ashwin. Now, I think that's that's really promising, and yeah, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how Simakas will play as well. Mm-hmm. But another another signing, obviously, we got Kanante, and I think his performances in preseason, like every game, I kind of looked at. And like highlights or whatever kind of turning into the game for a few minutes. Kanate, his tackles are amazing. His, his passing is also amazing. I think once he tra- he sent through Minamino through, mm-hmm. and like I think I like we defensively we have a really solid we're really solid I think now with Matip, Gomez, Van Dyke. I don't think I mean do you think Van Dyke will necessarily start like right now or do you think we're going to give Kanante like a chance right now. Um, I would have Van Dyke start the first. Um, yeah, maybe I'd have Van Dyke start the first game, see how his fitness is, see if he's running more. You know what I mean? And if you, or you could also put Kanate in like as a sub. You know what I mean? Don't if you don't want to, because we got you gotta play Van Dyke. He was number two in Ballon d'Or. He lost by four votes. Like yeah, I'm, just, I'm, like, just, I'm not sure. Thing, I feel like if I but Van Dijk is still coming time. off an injury, so if you can't play him fully, you could either swap him and Kanate out either one match, another match, or you could have him just come in as a sub until Van Dijk is fully ready to go. And if Kanate is um playing really well, you could have him. Sub in for our in the yeah, it's gonna be pretty expensive. I, I don't really know. I think like, he's if Van Dyke plays well, you need to have Van Dyke every single game. He yeah, be best player. I think it'll take him. I I think it'll take a little, a while. A little while. Obviously, Van Dyke had a serious injury. I don't yeah. think he's gonna be starting game after game until like October. No, no, no. I don't think he'll like this. I said he'll be starting game after game, or even if he does play a lot of games, I said he's gonna be taken out. Yeah, I definitely agree. He'll be rested in a, in a few games this year. Like, he'll be taken out in the, that's what I said, like, the 60th, 65th, you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, usually they don't do that. Usually they just rest him for a game, and that's probably just what they're going to do. Yeah. So, I think that will, that's another – but I think that our depth in, in the center back is really good right now. So, mm. I th- and we also have still – we still – I'm not sure that Phillips is going to leave or not, but we still have him in the, in the club. Mm-hmm. And he's in – in case anything goes wrong, we have him still. But I think, yeah, it's going to be – Really, and another player who, another another question mark we had is Minamino, I think, and and yesterday he played really well. So it's good. I I mean, do you think mm-hmm. he has a future in this team? I want him to. I mean, I want all of them to have like, the more depth we have, the better. So like yeah. Man City, look at all the depth they have. If we have, well, uh, Minamino's playing well, and he he's a super sub, that's perfect. You know what I mean? We need. Mm-hmm. Any player to get who could score goals that's good, we we want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like on our team, and we you don't want to see a player uh, just underperform. You want to see them. They want to yeah. see a player put their maximum effort in in every single minute they get. So you want I want to see Minamino play well, and I want to see him come in and like crucial substitutions or even start some games. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean that's what we need him to do. I think may, uh, hopefully like I I. I know he struggled with in. I know he's been struggling in South. He struggled alone in Southampton and for Liverpool. He hasn't really been doing well as well. But I think this is also his first full preseason with Liverpool because mm-hmm. when he came, his, he came came in January, and then COVID happened and and their preseason was like really short. So hopefully, 
maybe hopefully that now Minamino will have a full preseason. Maybe that will help. That will definitely help him to to grow and be able to comp- compete in this Liverpool squad. Like I against uh, in the friendly yesterday, he got I, he got a, go- a goal and an assist. Like so, I, and he could have got more out of it. And I think it's like I I was watching the game a little bit. Like his strength seemed to be improving. So and. I mean, he's a, I think he's a solid player to have, but I guess we need to see him play like that more often and not just in the friendly, but like in the Premier League. So like if they could all perform, maybe we get one, again, maybe we get one more player, something like Jota. I think we have a really good squad. I think, I still think our, and I I think with for me, Firmino played well yesterday as well. He got, mm-hmm. he got two goals. So if you could keep that go. If you could keep his form going, maybe prove all the haters wrong. Mm-hmm. This year we have, I think our our eleven, like if they play at their, we play at our our best. We're the best team in the league still. Yeah, no, because I think when we're at our best, we're just that attacking. Like we literally run around to anybody. We could run, we could throw balls over anybody, and they'll somehow just get into a, a yeah. Salah's hand for a goal. You know what I mean? Yeah, and. Um, once if Van Dyke really comes back strong from her injury, it, it's we could be right, uh title contending right up for the last week, if not. Yeah. By then. Sure, and I think I think the impact of the fans is going to have mm-hmm. this could be so huge for Liverpool, especially especially. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think no, I think I a lot really of hope are kind of are are not looking. They're overlooking at that factor and. Mm-hmm. Like I see a lot of people saying Liverpool won't be in the title. They're not even discussing Liverpool in the title race. It's either oh, it's either Chelsea, Man United, or Man City because of all the signings they made. But like everyone's overlooking Liverpool, which I think is is real is really wrong. And I think it's a good thing for us because we I think Liverpool mm-hmm. like to be on the underdog. That'd be funny if Liverpool won this year and just like nobody. And I was like oh, that yeah. I think. No, it's but I really I I I watched those two games. Like those, mm-hmm. like I'm, I that that gave me more confidence in in Liverpool. See, seeing mm-hmm. how we played, it's we played like how we did in, in a f- a few years ago, like before before COVID. I thought so. If we if if that continues, so I, I think if we could play like that. I think we definitely mm-hmm. could win the league. Hundred percent. I'm obviously since I I'm a Liverpool fan, I'm just gonna say we will we'll win the league this year. Why not? I mean, we, we have a chance. We have every chance. We can finally say we're gonna win the league and like before every season and not be like, not like be, it, you know not look I mean? stupid. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Those games kind of got me really excited, and the fact that Robertson is not is not seriously injured. Mm-hmm. But again, I still think we need like a fresh face. Maybe maybe Harvey Elliott will be that fresh face. Yeah. We need. Maybe we don't need another signing. Maybe just Harvey Elliott, but I feel like we need mm-hmm. that fresh face. I if we do need another son of a transfer, like a, uh, maybe something in Jan. If we are still like we're still win- even if we have a, are leading uh, the league in points in January, if we do if Klopp feels something, maybe we need a transfer in January. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. But I mean, overall, I mean, what the overall, what do you, like, what do you think of our like transfer activity? Because a lot of, I know a lot of Liverpool fans have been angry kind of looking at all the other clubs, it's kind of and we're not making enough transfers. To never see a notification on my phone, which is Liverpool's like blah 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 transfers or who. But um, I guess tr- Klopp's is trusting his gut, and he knows how good his team is when it's not injured. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I do think that what the the Kanate, what the signing we did get. I'm not, I mean, I know Leipzig, he was kind of on and off as first choice, but like, I think here he's also going to be on and off because we have, uh, because we have a really competitive team. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be really, we ha- like our center backs, like with Van Dijk, Gomez, Matip, Conante, I, those are really good center backs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, literally, like you look at that, like, for example, you look at May United, for example. Or you look at me, like that's United, we you have Maguire, over. You have Maguire I, uh, what, and Varan, and then you have Lindelof. That's where we still like sell over every team, I think, is our defense still could be tightly knit. Yeah. And um that leads us 
to our except Chelsea. Except Chelsea, mm-hmm. I think Chelsea will have a solid defense as well. And what do you think? Um, what's his name's gonna do? Um, how I can't even. Not Robert. I mean Robertson's gonna do. I feel like Trent. Trent, yeah, of course, but Trent. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. I mean, he, listen, he can. I can't he, believe he, I couldn't remember. The only place he could Trent, go was up after after last. Yeah, that's year. why was Trent was like for a bit our like golden boy. You know what I mean? Like he was gonna be the young player face of the club in the future, and then no, he will. That, yeah, but you still think he will? No, of course he will. I uh, Trent is still the star, of, like. And right back, who's going to, like... What do you he's think just, he's going to be a starter saying, every week. Like, What do you think of people saying move Trent uh, up? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think... I still think he's our right back right in back? the team, for sure. I mean, I'm, Nico Williams, I, it's, you kind of feel sad for him because he's literally Trent's hate. And, like, Trent is this good. Like, you have... Well, Nico Williams, you have, like, no chance in this club, like, to start regularly. Like, when you have... A player like Trent, like you can't compete with him. Mm-hmm. There's like no way. Yeah. There's no way you can compete with that player. Like that player has a lot of like unique abilities that right backs in the, all around the world world do not have. Yeah, no, he's a he still is a solid defender, but he's just such a great uh, playmaker. Yeah, like, he's still so, he's a playmaker that could defend. Yeah, <laughs> and last year, I I think last year it's hard. To like look, last year was just a really difficult season. Like, yeah, you can't really say much from last year. Yeah, right. and especially with no fans, I think that did make a huge impact last mm-hmm. year. And we were also in the title race until December. We were first until the mm-hmm. end of December. We have to remember that as well. It's just the injuries and all. Our first podcast ever, top of the league. Yeah. So mm-hmm. listen, we were. I think. I think we still we're still the champions of we were the champions of Europe we were the champions of the Premier League you can they cannot you cannot write us off mm-hmm. I think when you have that squad that's so experienced it's not justified but yeah well who overall like who do you think will be who do you think will surprise us this year in, in the league on the on the league or the team it's like like the Actually, yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk about the team and then the league. Who do you think will surprise us this year in the team? Um, how do you think? Well, we haven't even talked about how do you think Salah's gonna do? Mm, listen, I, th- I mean, I haven't really mentioned Salah yet, but I think he's gonna. Be, I mean, I expect him to still be top goal scorer in our team. Mm-hmm. Like, and he did have a good season last year. Yeah, he, he did. Good, he, he was top goal scorer. Mm-hmm. No, he, I wait. Did he, did he get more goals ahead of Kane? I don't think so. I think Kane got top goal scorer. Mm-hmm. But he still had. I think almost thirty. Goals, yeah, he right? was he was really close. Um, Mane, you can't write Mane off ever. No, Ma- still- yeah. Listen, we can't write that Jota. We can't write any of them off. But like, who I do hope- you think? Who do you think is the surprised player? I don't know if we could say maybe Jota because if Jota really starts sco- scoring like how he was at the high proficiency when he first came, then he's gonna start starting. And if he starts starting and scoring goals at that rate, he's gonna be all over the news. You know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. That's why I really like Jota, but I feel like um, surprise player again. You mentioned Ox earlier. If Ox plays good, K- yeah, I was gonna say Ox. But... Um, but who knows? I think even Thiago, because Thiago didn't have his a full didn't play to his full potential. If Thiago plays to his full potential, like he did in Bayern, that's a world class player right there. Yeah, I mean we have a lot of surprise mm-hmm. contenders because I because I think a lot of players are. And Prishin looked really good that, that that we kind of are questioning right now. Even, honestly, like, now Shimakas has a chance. Mm-hmm. Like, remember Robertson, Robertson, Robertson after Moreno got injured, how he performed. Mm-hmm. I think you never know how Shimakas could perform as well. Like, if, if he performs in a high level for a few games, you never know what could happen. So mm-hmm. he could easily be the surprise player for us as well. He has the opportunity right now absolutely so i don't know there's a lot of contenders i would have to say i think the i think right now ox for sure kieta like um, that's gonna be interesting to see um holy booth i think salah right for our team yeah yeah who do you think is gonna be surprised well i mean also firmino could be if firmino plays well for sure for sure that could be a very like he could have 18 
goals, 18 assists, you know what I mean? Or 18 goals, 20 something. Yeah, assists. something like that. Listen, yeah. that would be superb as well. But So, um, I think any of the players, because of how the season was last year, literally any of them could be a surprise. No, for sure. I don't know if you could say Van Dijk, if he plays like Bolonde or coming off injury, that's surprising or not, but he still was that type of player beforehand. But um, yeah, listen, there's a lot of there's, you could say anybody, but going to the league, who is going to surprise us? Um, see, just hmm, maybe, uh huh. There's a lot of teams, but I feel like some teams you could say, and it's not going to be like that surprising. Mm. I was saying then, my team, my surprise team is Aston Villa. Yeah, I mean, Aston Villa, I mentioned earlier, Aston Villa could definitely make it. Good run for the uh, Europa League, I think. Yeah, I like. I think a lot of people will doubt that because of Grealish, but. But you said they did reinforce themselves. Yeah, so I, that's why I'm kind of thinking. They, and Danny Ings is a very good goal scorer. We've yeah, seen that, and teams it. doubt that. Yeah, Danny Ings. Listen, I think Spurs would not mind him right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, I think they can. Who do you think will be the underachievers this year? Um, I mean, could you say Arsenal? <laughs> but like, I mean, okay, <laughs> Arsenal already. Everyone expects Arsenal to do bad, especially with, they have an Amazon but documentary like Spurs, this year. Like, They're the Amazon Arsenal documentary. Can say Spurs, but like in reality, like Everton's that. Like, where do you think Everton's gonna go? Oh, they have Benitez now. What do you actually think of that? About that? Um, Not coming into the Everton, it could. I think. No, I mean, like, in terms they, of... The, I think underachieving for Everton... Oh, uh, for who? Rafa Benitez. What do you think oh. of him going to our rivals? That, um, it's kind of... Ups- I mean, it is upsetting. But, like, obviously, we did close to Liverpool. But, like, it's not, like... I think now that Liverpool's... It, it would have been upsetting if, like, uh, he won... Or he went to Everton and they were good and we didn't have a title. But yeah, we have a I title. agree. Yeah, so, it's like, not the it's same. Not a, it's Everton not, yeah. being crap. Yeah, and, like... I, I kind of still feel bad for Everton fans. I have to walk down the street every day, and they definitely just see, like, banners upon banners of just all of our players and, like, Everton. Yeah. But, I mean, like, Everton still does have hope, and I think a not, a not a good season for Everton would be not making the top 10. I think they definitely need to make the top 10. I think they definitely want to make Europe. Yeah. And, um, they do have some of the players, and now they have the co- a coach that can do that. Yeah, so, I mean, they had Ancelotti as well mm-hmm. last year, so... We- I think Everton will be where Everton are, to be honest. Inconsistent. But <laughs> maybe the fans will help them because their their away record is really I, I, good. And, and are, I, remember there remember we had like OB come on and like stuff like that. Their re- away record is good, mm-hmm. but their home um, record is shit. Then, and isn't Everton their proof to get a new stadium, right? I believe so, yeah. That's yeah. another thing to look mm-hmm. at, have an eye on. But I think the most under I think the underperforming team is going to be, I think it's going to be May United. Really? You think? Yeah, I think. You think they're not going to make Champions League? No, I think they will, but I think everyone expects them to be in the title race. You think they fight because they got second place last year. Yeah, just so I'm thinking they could, they could definitely make fourth spot and then they could be like us, City, and Chelsea really bad at duking it out. That's why I think, well, I, that's why I think will happen this year. Mm-hmm. I don't think Ole is a good enough manager compared to Klopp, Pep. And if Ole play. doesn't pull, like if Man United comes starts to come out flat and like isn't is like like maybe six in like or fifth or six in like November December time, you know what I mean? If say they just can't didn't play that well, do you think they could fire Ole and get a? No, I don't think that's I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think they're going to start really well this mm-hmm. year. I, but I think they're going to start fall, start falling off by January February and then they're because gonna be, Ole is going to not be able to. Yeah, that's why I think what happened, and I think they'll be far away from like I think ten to fifteen points off the title race. Mm-hmm. And now I think that'll be disappointing for me. And, and then everybody else will. And then they, and then I'm not sure what group they have in the Champions League. I'm what not sure how Spurs far they could get. What? What do you think Spurs are gonna play? Okay, Spurs. I mean, I don't think Spurs have met any expectations this year, especially with Kane <laughs> Reeves. I don't like. I don't know. They could finish really badly. Is I think I predicted score. them to finish like eighth or something like that this year. If Kane leaves, Son is golden boot book it. <laughs> no, but if Spurs get top four, they're the, definitely the the team that outperform. Yeah. Year. I mean, so also maybe Spurs, they could get far because they Spurs, could maybe. 
Villa and Leicester could fight for Europe. Yeah. For Europa League, I mean. And West Ham. Like, Don't forget and West, West Ham. Ham. Those are going to be the... And Everton. Yeah. Oh, and maybe dude. even Arsenal. Who knows? Well, Arsenal don't have Europe this year, so maybe they could they, they could go far because of that. But you know, if Ars- Arsenal do what Arsenal do, there's always the Amazon documentary that we're going <laughs> to be seeing this year. I can't wait for that. If the Spurs one was good, oh, this one is just going to be amazing. <laughs> and it could be for a better club. Um, it can happen to a better team. So and look at what happened for uh, Spurs, like how they had the manager troubles now. Um, Posh is getting to coach Mbappe. Yeah. yeah. And Messi. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard, no, some people, Spurs, no, I, heard, I heard some Spurs and Arsenal fans say North London is dead. I think North London's more than just dead. They're just banter at this point. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. I saw, like, wasn't there a, no, was there a preseason North London Derby, right? Yeah, there was. Yeah. <laughs> it's first beat Arsenal still. <laughs> Despite Who was it? Was it, in, night, was it at, wasn't uh, even playing and they still lost. Was it in uh, the Emirates or was it in? No, it was at the, Tot- Tot- it was at the stadium. The Death Star. The weirdest stadium name in the world. The Death Star. <laughs> uh, they built a new stadium, right? You would think they would name it something, cre- some creative name. No, they have the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Mm-hmm. But uh, you, you wouldn't like you can't you can't just name it uh like White Hart Lane too or whatever. Like they should have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks, but the thing is, it looks. It's probably just gonna get its naming rights bought out eventually. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, you would think that they would be smart, but mm-hmm. apparently they're not smart. It looks like an been... American stadium. It looks like a football stadium. That's the point of it. They yeah. wanted to play NFL games there, remember? Like, yeah, true. I mean, listen, I know More than... you sat Mourinho before a cup final. I don't think you're the smartest owners in the world. That's crazy, yeah. And sacking Pazzutino as well. Pa- so... Like now, yeah, Pat is going to have. Now Pochettino's be- laughing. When he, when he league Un with like a 20 point lead, he's going to be easy contender for Champions League, like if not the favorites. Mm, can I ask, if Pochettino doesn't win the Champions League, do you think like he's, he's a failure in PSG? Um, Not entirely because if uh, either one of their players goes down or if it's to say they don't perform because we've if they to- lose like Man City or yeah. something like that. And they're competitive, I think so. I yeah, think maybe, yeah. I think the only way that's, I mean, like, yeah, they I, like losing the Man City in the final is nothing to be pressed about. No, losing yeah, us in the final would not be something to be pressed about. You know what I mean? Yeah, if they're going like, in the right direction. Yeah, we beat Messi in the same way. Yeah, we did, but like now they have Neymar and they have Mbappe yeah. with him. But <laughs> the thing is, we we st- anything could happen. We still could beat. Yeah, that's like, true. Champions League is really they could lose to PSG could lose to Chelsea, they could lose to Man City, they could lose to Liverpool, they could lose to Juve. Like, true. Yeah, for sure. And then another, what was it? Oh, yeah. Another thing, I, a team I think could really underperform is Southampton. Mm, like, I'm not sure. I think, I mean, I think Southampton is more expected than Man United because Man United have too much hype right now. Mm. I think. I mean, they have hype for the right reasons, but like with the men in charge, too much hype. But I definitely do think, I do think Southampton could get relegated this year. Like they it's sold Danny Ings, year. which is there, and I don't think they replaced him yet. If you said Danny Ings is such a good player to have, like mm-hmm. he's the one who scores the goals for Southampton. Goals Without him, Hampton. they could go down. I think. How do you think uh, Wolverhampton's going to do? I think Wolves. I mean, they have him in his back, right? So mm-hmm. I think they'll be steadily. In uh, the manager is out, right? Nino yeah, Santa. I don't know who the manager. Where, where did he go? He went to Spurs. He went to, oh, yeah. Nuno. Bruh. Oh, <laughs> we were just I talking forgot. about that. Yeah, no, but Mourinho went out for Nuno, yeah. Yeah. But that's, so. that's, hmm, that's crazy. Yeah. He so could I be, think Will's if there's table. one thing that could save Spurs, it could be him. Because yeah, he is a true. good coach. He's a good coach. But I don't yeah. think he has the, uh, the talent or the, the financial ability to really make the, uh, how do you get that much money for a new stadium when you can't put a winning product, like a consistent <laughs> They're the nicest, like they literally have like the, one of the nicest stadiums. Listen, you said, you said Kroenke build a new stadium, but what they're what are they doing? Yeah, no, they're probably gonna go what nine and nine, or 
Yeah, no, no, they have a seventh game this year, so it's gonna be nine and eight. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe even worse. Maybe yeah. like seven and ten. Oh, which is that's the stupidest thing that like, and like oh. changes the game. Like how there's always been it, and like they're adding a seventeenth NFL game. I, I just don't. I'm like, I don't oh. know. Yeah. There's so much oh. stuff changing in every sport because of Corona. Oh, because of yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. But- it's, yeah, so it's going to be a fun season, to be How, honest. Do you, do you think fans are going to be in the seats every game? Do you think? Okay. I mean, that's something we can't really predict with COVID. That's so. what I – because I hope with the vaccination push, they kind of have to realize even with the Delta outbreaks that if everybody's vaccinated well, – I mean, really I, do want, I do want to go to England in the spring semester. So. Yes, no, no. Exa- like, I want to – I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going yet, but, like, I, if if – I do go. I would want to go to Liverpool. You want to see a few matches. Even though the Liverpool ticketing system is very complicated. Oh, it's very, yeah, to get in. No, so it's going to be... Third-party tickets are very tough to come by. Yeah, so we'll people, see what happens with that. It's good to know people do not want to sell their tickets for Liverpool games. <laughs> they yeah. want to go to every game in and out. Yeah, so listen, we'll, that... It, but with, uh, with, if there's no fans, it's gonna be even it's gonna be even harder now. Mm-hmm. And then there's so, if there's no fans, it's impossible. I but I'm really hoping. I mean, no, I hope so. Too. Unless the UK government backtracks on it, I I think it's right now. It, I think we're kind of too far past the point. You know, like return. Yeah, I hope so. I really do hope because so. I don't think the US is gonna lose in-person sports. No, I don't think so either. No. Yeah, so that's gonna be. That's gonna be very. I mean, with the, hopefully with the fans being there, it's gonna be exciting, and it's gonna be. I feel, last year at times the Premier League seemed dead in a yeah. way, like no mm-hmm. fans, this that. It just felt like a like a funeral type of thing, like. You've been making a lot of comparisons to death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of comparisons to teams really dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's too. That's it's too many comparisons. Okay, we should let's just get let's just get talk, stop talking about deaths and maybe talk about what the games that are coming up this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good transition. Uh, so we play Norwich. Uh, um, Norwich, let me look, let me look at who Norwich got this year. I think they made a few good transfers. Josh Sargent. Josh Sargent, yeah, that's one. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be very exciting to see uh, as an American. Mm-hmm. I haven't really been impressed by Josh Sargent yet, but like, you know, he's still young. Maybe mm-hmm. he can prove something in Norwich. So they also got a player called Persi- Josh Sargent, who's 10 million. So this is their most expensive sign. Actually, no, not their most expensive signing. Actually, there's more. And then they bought Lise Malou for 6.6 million from Nice. Some guy from Petersboro, mm-hmm. we'll skip him. And then they have Gil- Billy Gilmore from Chelsea on loan. Mm. That's going to be a good signing for them, I think. Then they got, they said, no, you know what? I thought that Norwich, I thought Norwich could get relegated, but they made a lot of good, <laughs> a lot of transfers. Okay. Maybe you have to reconsider that. Uh, Gibson, Ben Gibson from Burnley for 11 million. How do I you mean, think? Then they have, they have, they got Angus Gunn from Southampton. I think he's like, there's, is he, he's I think he's one of their like second keeper, right? And they got left back from Payok. They got center and they got another center forward from Wender Bermin. So they got two players from Josh Argent's team. Josh Argent and and this other guy, Rashis. Mm-hmm. So, so it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be pretty interesting, honest honestly. I mean how, how I mean, Billy, players like Josh Hargis and Billy Gilmore, I think they're really good players. So how do you think they'll do um, overall? It's going to be – it's still not going to be a give-me game, but Liverpool should win, like, yeah. maybe like maybe three to one. And, like, hopefully, like, somebody like Salah will have a break. Yeah. Somebody else will score, score a surprising goal. And then Josh Sargent will have the goal for Norwich. Yeah. Just really... All right. There's, not, there's some injury news here with Todd C- Cantowell. Remember him? And. In- he mm-hmm. was in the prem two years ago. Mm-hmm. He's an injury doubt for this game, so that's good news for us. So, um, so yeah, I, I mean, hope Norwich are going to be up for it because it's their first home game back. Yeah, in no, the prem with, be... with fans. 
Because when they got relegated, they were there were no fans in the stadium, and they got relegated. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, Norwich had to improve their squad after being truly embarrassed in the league. They got they were like last place, weren't they? Yeah, and they were. So they the they all they needed to do, but they needed to get better players. I'm not sure if all these signings will be enough for them to stay up. To be honest, but how do you think? Um, like, in, uh, I think a big surprise last year was Leeds. How do you think Leeds is gonna do? I think Leeds will be steady where they are. I think they'll mid table. Yeah, I think so. I think that'll be good for them. I think eventually they'll grow and maybe. I think the spending of the teams above them are just too good. I think. Yeah. Maybe they can get above Arsenal. I think <laughs> possibility, honestly, in Spurs. <laughs> Even though Spurs got Romero, mm -hmm. who could be a good player from Argentina, Argentinian player, but yeah. Back in the Norwich game, listen, home Norwich have a home crowd, mm -hmm. so they're gonna be up. They're gonna be right up for this game, and but, so it's gonna be a little difficult. But listen, Liverpool play at their best; they win the game. Yep. So hopefully they do win. Well, what's our starting eleven? We're we're back with the starting eleven predictions. Um, Trent. Okay, um, first of all, Allison goal. Allison goal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Trent, Trent as you said. Um, Simakas, left Simikas, back, right? Um, Van Dyke, I would want to see maybe. I would want him to start for the first game just because it's the first game, and then maybe be taken out for a sub. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who do you think is gonna be the other center mid? Mm, yeah, let me it's see. I, I want to center. see. Let me just recall how many minutes did Van Dyke play in the friendly. Okay, but he did play seventy-two minutes, so I definitely do think he could start. Yeah, he played 72 minutes in this game. So I feel like they're kind of, even though Van Dyke came a little late in the preseason because of his injury, like recovering, he he's getting more and more minutes. He played 72 minutes mm -hmm. yet last uh, last game. So, so I think, yeah, I do think, I think Van Dyke, it'll be Van Dyke. I, I think Gomez, how, how many minutes did Gomez play? It? You think know. Gomez is going to start? I'm just... I'm just trying to contemplate. Gomez came off at the 60th. So I, I think Gomez came off 7, 12 minutes earlier than Van Dyke. I think that gives me an indication that Gomez is not ready yet. Mm -hmm. Let me, I'm just trying to, I'm trying, Matip played, Matip played the full game against Electrico Bilbao. So you think Matip, it's going to be uh, Trent Matip? Van, I feel like Van Dyke is a little, I think he may be, it may be too soon. I feel like Van Dyke will start the, the Burnley game. So I'm going to say Matip. I think Kanate played the full game as well, didn't he? Oh, no. Kanate came off at the 80th, but 80th is more than... I think it's going to be... It's good. That's an interesting one. I, I'm probably going to be wrong, honestly. I I'm going to say gonna Matip be, and Kanate. I'm going to say Trent, Matip, Van Dyke, and Simakas. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Simakas. I'm going to say... Wait, well, you said Matip, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think Matip is a definite starter. Trent, Matip, Van Dyke, and Simakas. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Kanante instead of Van Dyke. Yeah. So I think he's just more prepared than. What's your midfield? But, uh, Van Dyke, but I'm not sure. It'll be interesting. I don't, mm -hmm. I definitely don't think Gomez will start. I think he he only got 60 minutes in the mm -hmm. last friendly, and I think that's for a reason. Uh, what's your midfield? That's that's another hard one. You actually asked about that in, earlier, right? Mm -hmm, because it's, what, there's a lot of options, options we have. Mm -hmm. I I just thought it was a little difficult to say. I mean Henderson. I don't think he'll. I don't think Henderson will start though. Really? I don't think Thiago will start because they just came back. Like, I think if play... Henderson um, starts, or if Henderson starts, maybe then Kanate will start. But if Van Dyke starts, then Henderson maybe not start. But I think one of them is going to be the captain. Oh, yeah, you're right. True. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. I mean, Henderson, he's coming back from injury. He played third. I'm going to me. that's a hard one. Yeah, I think they could have both, and it could be Henderson. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. You think it'd be Henderson? Who else would be out there? We don't have find all of them anymore, so like we yeah. can't say his name. How many minutes did Henderson play? Where's uh, Fabino? Oh, I, yeah, Fabinho, I think, will start. Yeah. Uh, actually, Thiago played 30 minutes. Henderson only played 19, so that, that gives me an indication that Henderson won't play. So, I think Van Dijk will start, then it'll be Fabinho. Um, but it's Thiago, you think? 
I'm going to say, okay, my, this is why I'm with you. I think I decided. It could be Fabinho. Fabinho. Yeah, I was thinking about him too. Wait, it's going to be, I think it's going to be Fabinho, uh, Thiago, and Ox. That's the good one. Or, or Keita. Keita. No, wait. Or maybe it's going to be, or it could be, or it could be Fabinho. No, it's either Ox or Keta. I'm between. Hmm. Is it Ox or Keta? Because they both played really well. I think it's going to be Fabinho, Thiago, and Ox. And then the front three is going to be the front three. Yeah, I think so. You don't think Jota's Jota on the bench? Jota right? would be on the bench. Yeah, I'm going to just add it to Ox, I think. For Keta? I think he was. They both played really well, but I think Ox was man of the match. And do you think if Henderson season. doesn't start, you think Van Dyke is going to. But start of Kante for captainship. No, I don't think we. I feel like we have enough. Who, Who'd we, be the I captain in that? Uh, the captain. I think it would be probably Trent or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's. A, I think we have a solid team with that. Maybe Van Dyke will play because of the Robertson injury. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It can honestly be anything. We know. It's really hard to like say, but yeah, I'm, we have different lineups. But I think that kind of shows that how. How good yeah. we are in depth, but I agree with your midfield. I think we had, I think we kind of agreed on a good midfield Fabinho, Ox, and then Thiago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Jones got injured. I think he, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how, how seriously injured he was. I mean, I watched the first half, he was literally, we haven't killed. talked about Fabinho, they were all... killing, literally, that's true. They're, those players were thinking, were thinking, how do I kill Jones quicker? Like, literally, <laughs> they were. He they pushed him down and then they hit him in the face. That's how he yeah. went off. Like literally. Like just mentioning before Fabinho, we haven't talked on all episode. How do you th- how do you feel about him? Fabinho? Mm-hmm. Fabinho is a game changer for yeah. us. Like, I think he's been and he's only improved. Because at first yeah, Fabinho was kind of shaky. We didn't know we were kind of mixed yeah. feelings, but I feel like Fabinho's only improved. And he's really textbook center defensive mid. Like Yeah, but you can see the difference of him. Well, I remember last year we were talking about this. Mm-hmm. I remember the difference of without with our squad with Fabinho and without Fabinho. Yeah, it was. It, it was crazy. We felt lifeless sometimes without him. Yeah, it, it, Fabinho is that imposing figure in the midfield that we really need. Mm-hmm. And I think the one thing we made a mistake in was putting doing that whole center back Fabinho and center back yeah. looking back into that. Looking back mm-hmm. to what we could have won some more games. You think? And I, yeah, we could have got second place. I think. And maybe we should have got we should have played Phillips a lot sooner. Mm-hmm. So if we played Phillips a lot sooner, I think we would have not been in the situation where we we were scrambling top four at the end. We could have gotten we could we could have been may and I comfortable, I think. We didn't need Allison Magic. We didn't need to have well you, <laughs> you know what we can't regret. We can't regret <laughs> what happened after Allison's magic, honestly. Oh my god. Actually, you weren't even on the podcast team. To talk about it, but yeah, the uh, Allison Matt, how did he even react to that? Because I don't think you were, um, I don't think you were on the podcast. No, I think I remember talking to you about it. I feel like I did. I feel like I remember talking. We, about I think it. we texted about it, but not um, on here. I oh my god, that was I was just actually, I think I turned off the game. <laughs> I think I turned off the game before that, and but my dad, I wasn't. My dad was on a plane, and he couldn't watch either because he didn't have Wi Fi. He only could have had like barely any service to text. So I turned off the game because I couldn't watch. I'm like, oh, our title hopes are down the drain. And you then I just remember four. getting, I remember getting the notification which said, goal scored 2 1, 90, <laughs> plus, what, 90 plus 5, right? Yeah. 90 plus 5, Allison won. <laughs> one goal. I'm like, that has to be a misprint. They had to assign it to somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's no way. They, like, they had to show the, uh, like, the notification had to be wrong. Like they might have done, uh, put it to the wrong player. And I'm like, I'm like, this can't be right. So I said, Allison on Twitter, and Twitter is literally like not loading. Then, <laughs> <laughs> like no, the Allison tweets aren't loading. No. And then I, I saw some video, and it was the Arabic video. And I'm like, holy shit! And it was actually like, uh, like him crying. Like, that was actually one of the, like, I think, even not, if the, that was the take, the best part. Of, that was the best p- part of the season last season. Oh, for sure. You missed it. You missed it. No, I know, but I, you're like you're like you're like you remember like I, in Instagram I saw like something of uh, like company scoring the screamer and then the, a fan was walking out of the stadium. That was basically like you. That was yeah, kind of, well, not maybe eighty seventh. Like, yes, like that. that was kind of lame. Like what? The, why? 
just I I I because I felt like we weren't doing much. You know what I mean? Yeah. But and the I, when fun. I when I was at my dorm when watching the game, so like when we when we scored when we scored in the last minute, I, I was like you you know my do- you know the yeah. dorm we, you you, you were in my dorm like in that that place good like. I I thought that I thought that I was yelling so much and I took off my shirt and all that. I was like waving it. <laughs> I was I was worried that maybe my windows I think was open, so I was hoping maybe someone maybe didn't see it, <laughs> or or I was worried that maybe someone would would complain that I was yelling too loud. But yeah, that, <laughs> that's <laughs> so. But I got need, but I didn't get any complaints in the wine scene chat. So I think I think everything was fine. I think so. But yeah, that was a crazy moment. Like that goal, mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. And then the May and I the game, we won 4-2. I was literally standing from my final, one of my finals. I couldn't barely was able to watch the game. But mm-hmm. that was incredible. I turned the game, actually in the main end game, I turned the game off after 1-0. And then I, I saw a notification 1-1. I started to watch the game again. And then I watched the full game at that. So you study or you watched more than you studied yeah no i think i was eating and studying that's why i did i was eating and watching and studying studying later (laughs) whatever it is what it is accounting that that was a that was another pain but yeah what's your what's your prediction for what's your prediction for the game um i said (laughs) 3-1 3-1 yeah i'm gonna go 3-1 as well I think we'll, I think we'll concede because away game then be difficult. Want us to concede to but we have a good record against Norwich, so mm-hmm. I think we should we'll do well in this game. Yeah, I'm saying three one. Let's look at the other big games this week. What? Not. Uh, do you think Arsenal will lose their first game? Ars- the first game being played this year is Brentford versus Arsenal. Brentford, obviously, first time in the Premier League. They're a really exciting team. From what I hear, like they have a few um, good players. Maybe mm, I think there's a good chance it could be a draw, actually. But Arsenal should win, so there's a good chance it could be a draw. I, I think it's gonna be the excitement of the the home crowd, first time in the Premier League. I think it's gonna be an Arsenal loss. I think, I think it's gonna be two one Brentford. <laughs> Three points to Brentford, and Arsenal getting their first defeat, and it's gonna be <laughs> lovely. Oh, it's, that's gonna be a lovely scene. How about hmm? In how do you think Man United will do their first game against Leeds? Um, they should win, but Leeds still uh, always is a run for your money. You know yeah, I, mean? I think United will win this easily because Leeds defense is not that good. I think United will concede. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be like four one. Yeah, actually, I don't think Varane will play. So uh, yeah, uh, Varane just came in the club. I don't think he'll play. Mm-hmm. So yeah, four one. Uh, let's see, Chelsea Crystal Palace. Um, I think Chelsea, Chelsea win this yeah, easily. Chelsea. Actually, I do think Crystal Palace could, go, could could be in a real tough position this year because Roy Hudson is not in charge anymore. Mm-hmm. And now they have Patrick Vieira. I, and he hasn't really had a good record as manager so far. Like, he was in Nice and he struggled. He got sacked. So, yeah. I'm just going to be... Uh, that's another thing to look out for. Have you, did you see uh, they put... Uh, what, I mean, when we just started the podcast, they actually PSG posted uh, Messi. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, no, no, I, like, I didn't see. I I knew that he was official, but I didn't see the uh, jersey and everything. Oh, I saw. I it was right before the podcast started. Actually, yeah, I saw I thought, it right before. Yeah. I see. I just see the jersey pictures. That's yeah, number thirty. Doesn't feel right? real. Number thirty. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Number thirty. <laughs> it does not look real. Yeah, we're posted, we this we're filming this on Tuesday, so you got you yeah. know, seeing this like, on Thursday. This, this seeing, picture like, just what, happened. Like, if you're seeing this on Thursday, and you're like, "What the fuck? I just saw this just a few days ago." Uh, yeah, we, we filmed this on Tuesday, August and, 10th. Yeah, it literally just happened as we started yeah. this podcast. Yeah, so just to clarify to our <laughs> viewers, uh, but yeah, Crystal Palace. I think Chelsea should easily be Crystal Palace. Two yeah. 0 right? Mm-hmm. Two or three 0 yeah. Uh, Who's City playing? How about, I mean, last Leicester Wolves? That's going to be a tight Leicester game. Wolves going to be a good game. It should be like 2 1 Leicester. Mm, I think it's good. I looked at their previous fixtures. Like it's been 1 0 Leicester and the rest of the games have been 0 0. 
So I'm, I'm saying go on to Leicester here. Okay. That's yeah, it's gonna be a tight game, I think. Uh and the big the big game of the week, Tottenham, Man City. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Um I mean it's unless I'm trying to, trying to do anything, it should be like three one, three nothing city. Yeah, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be this can be really bad. Three one <laughs> man city. <laughs> Four, like it could be, I think three nil. It's probably it could be Left three nil as well. You know, no, actually, it, actually, actually, here, here, hear me out. Three one Man City. Kane will have to go for go for Tottenham. If ta- if Kane is on Man City, it's five nil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. I agree. No, I don't think Kane. I think I don't think Kane will even play for Man City at that point. Yeah, you never know. But he, I think he'll come off the bench if anything, which would be really ironic. But <laughs> the motion. But yeah. You know that Tottenham in the in in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, Tottenham have beat have have won all the games against Man City. Really, Man City came. So, so they all, they, maybe maybe that, remember the Champions maybe League. Maybe that one nil Kane win. You remember the cha- remember the Champions League? Yes. The one nil game. Then they beat that Mourinho beat Pep twice at home. Mm-hmm. So those are the, those are. But listen, I think it's a different Tottenham team. To what it was previously, and a different and uh, Man City, a different Man City. Who knows? Team. It still could always be two nothing. Yeah, it could. Or like one nothing time, like or like two nothing Man City, one nothing Tottenham. It could be really good. Can you imagine Man City lose their first game against Tottenham? Santo. Could oh, be. I would love that. You know, I would that'd love be, that. That'd be banter. It's banter. This banter that we had on both sides here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you, you would definitely be happy with about your uncle's team. Your uncle supports yeah. Spurs, right? Yeah, my uncle supports Spurs, oh, okay. but yeah. I mean, I think of, I kind of rather have Spurs win because that just takes points away from Man City, and even at the for the first game of the season, any points away from Man City. Oh, for sure. Away from Man City. Any, well, listen, I think that's that's all the games we kind of have. Hopefully, this year I will not have to look at. Uh, we won't. We won't have to talk about fixtures of Austin Villa, uh, Leicester, West Ham. Uh, Arsenal, Tottenham. I do not want to be talking about any of those teams because that if we do, that means we're not in a good position in the league. I want yeah. to get back to the beginning of the podcast where we only talked about Man Liverpool. City and maybe Man United, maybe Chelsea. That's it. I do not want to talk about at all like the teams we don't need to be fighting with. We want to be fighting in the top this year, and hopefully, yeah. I'm confident we could do that this year. What mm-hmm. do you think? Um, that's the goal. The goal to win a title. It'll definitely take, to win a title. Our goal is to win a title this season. It isn't to make the Champions League. Our goal is to win a title. This season. Yeah, for sure. And honestly, we haven't even talked about it. What are our odds in the Champions League this season? I don't know. I think they're pretty good. I think they may be good too, but we could kind of, I guess, I don't know. It's good. I think let's wait until like PSG the transfer window actually ends. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, you never know. These sides can make some more mad signings. Let's see once we get the groups to the... Once we see our groups, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like let's let's when we preview our first game in the Champions League, we could talk about that. PSG are clear favorites for that. Oh, it's for funny sure. PSG, yeah, looking... like I remember a few months ago, it seemed like PSG were kind of faltering off in the bigger clubs. You know what I mean? And they just it seemed like Mbappe was going to leave. It seemed like Neymar wasn't happy, and they really just turned it all yeah. around now with Messi. For sure, yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be a pretty exciting season. I can't. I can really can't wait. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna be interesting. We have we our first few games or first three games. I think it's good to just see our first three games because of the international break. We have Norwich, Burnley, Chelsea. The big game is the third game. We play at home against Chelsea. It's but good. It's at home. It's good. It's at home early on. Mm-hmm. So get it over with. You know, but the thing is, I mean, I'd rather have the home game at the end. Yeah, I'd rather have all the home games at the end, that's especially true. when I'm there. By the way, mm-hmm. if I'm the, if I do go, if, you're there. if I'm there, that's that's a question, but a big question mark. But that would be fun to see. That would be fun to see Chelsea. I think at the end of the season is usually better because because usually like you don't want to play away against Chelsea. You want to be at home at the end of the season mm-hmm. when everything matters. Yeah. But maybe now Chelsea won't be fully. But Lukaku may not be fully adjusted. Maybe it'll be easier game. I don't know. I mean, Chelsea are a really good team, so it's gonna be a difficult. That's gonna be a difficult yeah. game. But listen, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be a really fun season. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I agree. 
it's gonna be an inter- it's a whole new fresh start it feels like yeah it feel it just feel like a fresh start like mm-hmm. so yeah that's do you have anything else to say in this Not episode much. i think we already we covered we spent probably an hour and a half covering every single thing possible yeah that we happened didn't even have summer. a script for this episode it's <laughs> it's it's early i i'm just I, I don't know how else to say i'm so excited for this year yeah and hopefully you guys are all excited too and hopefully you continue to watch watch the podcast i was hope hopefully it's gonna be a good year for for the, the sports universe and and uh make sure you you subscribe to the sports universe youtube channel um so you you follow their instagrams i think they have a they have a tiktok as well for the sport universe so i think yeah so and also look at our website because there's always articles being posted i know dylan you you posted a few articles about the mets right not mm-hmm. mets a while ago oh, about the nfl right yeah a while yeah mm-hmm. a while That's ago yeah, I, I, I gotta less... start getting back into it yeah never uh, the especially last... with the school year come back in it gives me good reason i'm gonna be sitting in an apartment to yeah. write some articles yeah I'm, i always I'm, feel like i always get like biter's block yeah i'm i'm pretty excited so mm-hmm. yeah we'll see you all next next week and hopefully we get our first we get our first win in the season and we start well we continue to be this excited this excited maybe a, maybe a transfer a surprising transfer would be nice as well to talk about mm-hmm. so see you all next see you all next week see you guys